When Captain Woolley gave the order to raise the anchor, a shackle got caught in a hawse pipe. The cable parted, and the 3,000-pound anchor and some 300 feet of anchor chain were lost. Without them, Woolley chose the only option left to him, to make a run for open sea. He set a course between Dead Chest and Salt Island, but the ship was being driven toward Black Rock Point at the edge of Salt Island. It was the last obstacle between the Rhone and open sea. Captain Woolley had ordered all able hands on deck to lash themselves topside rather than be caught below decks should the Rhone begin to sink. While this was a precaution common to the period, it proved to be their undoing. As the ship drew nearer to the rocks, a giant wave washed Captain Woolley from the helm and onto a skylight. The next one took him overboard between the ship and the rocks. He was never seen again. The once proud ship was now completely at the mercy of the sea, and the sea proved to be completely merciless. The Rhone was dashed onto the rocks, causing her to heel over and split completely in half. It is said that a great explosion shot the condenser up through the deck and into the sea. The Rhone sank like an anvil so quickly that the crew was unable to deploy even the smallest lifeboat. Those who had lashed themselves topside went down with the ship. A handful of crew members clinging to bits of debris made it to shore. Six other crewmen were lucky enough to be washed onto a hammock bin, which they used as a lifeboat until they were rescued the next day. A young fireman clung to the crow's nest of the foremast for 17 hours. One passenger survived. The curtain closed on the Rhone. Time passed, and she was slowly reclaimed by the sea in a shallow grave just a stone's toss from Salt Island. With the growing popularity of sport scuba diving, she has now been rediscovered, not just as a world-class dive site, but also as a memorial to Captain Woolley, his passengers and crew. The Rhone's bow is under 80 feet of water, having become separated from her stern in 1867. The typical dive profile gives us 25 minutes here. We have a lot to cover in that time, and while we won't exactly do wind sprints around the wreck, we do move along at a steady pace, beginning at the bow sprit. Over the years, the bow section has come to rest on its starboard side, so a left turn at the sprit takes us along her keel. The wreck side is swept by consistent, gentle currents, which provide a nutrient-rich environment for corals, sponges, and an abundance of other forms of sea life. We ascend along the hull of the ship, which resembles a small wall since it's almost completely overgrown with marine organisms. The dive brief has told us about which artifacts have survived hurricanes, thieves, and other ravages of the sea. Here we find the first one, a porthole which still contains a pane of thick quartz glass. About a meter and a half away is our point of penetration into the hull. Peter Benchley fans will recognize this hatchway as the scene of a cute moment between Nick Nolte and Jackie Bissett during the opening sequence of the movie The Deep. Entering the famous hatchway reveals large schools of grunts and other fish. Structures which once supported a seagoing vessel now support cup corals, crabs, and other life. We linger for a moment to take it all in. Thank you. 